Hello and welcome to the crypto channel where I try to bring you the news without the hype. The first thing we're going to look at is from Yassin Mobarak, who says six years ago today, XRP hit its all time high. Six years. I haven't uh, double checked this, but it sounds about right. It's an awful long time. So 2017, we're now 2024. Uh, was it 2017 or was it 2018? I think it was around January the 6th, if my memory serves me correct. But we have been waiting a long time. So at the moment, if you're looking at the sentiment in the market, there's a lot of frustration that people are saying, well, XRP has been doing terribly and you're looking at things like Solana that have done really, really well. But what I always find during these kind of times where people's emotions are up and people are frustrated is to listen to some of the chart people who are much more cold and calculated because they're not really looking at the news and the narratives. They're just looking at how the charts work. I have a handful of chart people that I follow. BC Backer is definitely one of my top people. I also like Kevin Cage. I think he's fantastic. But what they do is they kind of look back in time and go, well, actually, Solana was doing so terribly that yes, it's increased by, what is it, hundreds of percent. I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't particularly follow it in too much detail. But it's kind of bought, it, bought Solana back up to where it should be around about now. So it's not that these things have done exceptionally well. If you look back long enough throughout history, the problem with chart reading is if you want me to give you a narrative, you just need to kind of look at a certain time frame on the charts and go, aha, and this is what they do on the mainstream news where they go, Bitcoin has done the best in the last seven months of any of the cryptos. But if you look at the last eight months, then you find that Bitcoin hasn't done the best or the nine months or 10 months, whatever. And actually other cryptocurrencies have done much better. So, you know, we are in one of those times people are frustrated. I still look at the fundamentals of XRP and think they're, I, I still think they're good. Um, but as I often say on this channel, if we don't see a bull run, if we're not included in this bull run that happens, then yeah, I, I will have no qualms about reshuffling my portfolio and also reshuffling this program to look at other cryptocurrencies. But at the moment, I'm still still pretty happy with XRP. Mr. Huber says, uh, you have the literal founder of Ripple and XRP talking about $33 per XRP, but it's not enough for you. You believe in a secret plan that is even more secret than the most bullish scenario that the founder wants to say publicly. You're hoping for mega moments that, let me open this up. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Sorry, I've just lost my... You're hoping for magical moments that flips the switch from cents to thousands of dollars. If you're offended by this tweet, then you're embarrassed by your reasonable idea. Sorry, Twitter's changed the way they've opened. When you open up a tweet, um, it now comes to the side of the screen as opposed to opens up just that tweet. So yeah, Mr. Huber seems to be quite an interesting person. Just before the last dip, he said uh, he put out a tweet saying you should take some profits now, and everyone was just doing laughy emojis and stuff. But he wrote that literally just before we had a uh, a crypto crash. So I thought that was interesting. But if any of you are listening to this, I personally haven't heard about. Ripple, uh, the founder of Ripple, so Chris Larson or Brad Gardinghouse, etc., talking about a $33 per XRP. I don't think Mr. Huber is wrong because he's generally very good with his information. So I would love it if anyone could find me a link to where they talk about the $33 XRP. I would love to include that in a show and do a little bit of research into that because I personally haven't seen that. But I thought it was fantastic to include because Mr. Huber is pretty good at his research. Okay. So let me just work out what Twitter's doing. Uh, so Adonna Farina XRP, the worst time to sell XRP is now. The second worst time will be at $10. Uh, I enjoy a lot of these tweets. Uh, I spend a lot of time on Twitter because uh, I'm always interested in people's thoughts. You know, it's difficult because you've got one group of people going, XRP sucks and all of you people that have been holding, you haven't made any money. Whereas if you were holding Ethereum, you would have made really good money by now. And it's frustrating, I get it. But when you look at the kind of the macro picture of this environment, there's so much rubbish that's gone on with uh, Ethereum as well as Bitcoin, where the truth is ne never fully spoken about. And we are in this world where it's so hard to get truth and on mainstream to actually hear the true picture as opposed to a biased one-sided picture. And it's so often what we see now, it's hard to kind of work out 
well, actually, is the, the best asset going to win or is the one that's sitting in bed with the most powerful people, is that asset going to win? It's, I think that's the most difficult time at this period in time to try and ascertain and work out what's going to happen because normally the best technology and the best ideas would work in a free capital market. But at the moment, we're seeing so many free passes, you know, with Sam Bankman Freed and things like this. And it depends who you're kind of in bed with as to how well you do, or so it seems at the moment. I don't know whether whether this is the same behind the scenes with countries like Dubai, England, Australia, Singapore, who really are pushing blockchain technology. Uh, I've seen uh, quite a few people talking about how Dubai will be the Silicon Valley for blockchain technology, etc., I don't know whether it's the same there with, you know, is the best technology going to win or is it who you know and who you've paid the most money to to make your plans work? I think that's the big unknown for me, the big the big kind of question I have at the moment. You know, will Bitcoin and Ethereum keep surging year on, year out, um, and in 10 years be worth a million dollars or whatever? It's difficult to know because on the, the face of it, the technology behind some of these things doesn't seem as good as what XRP has. And But does that matter? Uh, an, on, an honest question. This channel is about food for thought. If you have some opinions on that, let us know. Do you think the best technology will win the day or do you think the one that is in bed with the right people is going to win the day? Okay, let's see. So blockchain backer, uh, perfect formula for XRP price chart to shine. Conditions in Bitcoin stock market and altcoin market. So BC Backer, if you, I listen to him most days and he was talking about how he didn't really want to specifically focus in, on XRP because most of his videos focus on Bitcoin as well as general markets around the world, the stock market, etc. So he does a show called Markets in the Morning where he tells you what the prices of gold and the S&P, etc. are doing. And he was saying the reason why he didn't want to talk about XRP straight away is because we hadn't seen this crash that he, in his mind, with his tech, technical analysis, was saying this needed to happen before we actually could do what XRP is supposed to do and an altcoin starts. Now that we've seen this crash and everyone's going, oh, this is just perfect, you know, XRP sucking like normal, BC Backer is actually going, I'm so excited that we've crashed because we needed to see this on the charts in order for us to fulfill the prophecy of what the charts are showing and that, yes, uh, we are on track for a bull run. I don't want to put on this channel false hope. I don't know whether we are going to go into a bull run. I'm hopeful, very hopeful. And like I always say, I think the fundamentals of XRP and Ripple, the company, are fantastic. I don't want to give hopium for the sake of hopium, but people like BC Backer, I really do trust their technical analysis because he's done very well. He's proven himself over the years to have been incredibly accurate with a lot of what he's saying. So food for thought, um, you know, you have someone who has spent years looking at the charts, basically saying this is, was actually a good thing and don't worry, basically. It's frustrating. I get it. I'm pissed off with price. I know people hate listening to the a lot of the channels out there going, oh, we're going to be entering a bull run anytime soon. You know, I'm just here to give you the information and I'm really hopeful that we do see this bull run. I think there's no reason why we shouldn't. You know, there is possibly a lot of market manipulation, etc. But I think these things will do things when they're ready to do these things. And I think it will be amazing when they do do it. That's what I hold on to hope. That's why we are here. Uh, speculation, etc. Okay, I thought this was interesting, and this is from Peter St. Ange, PhD, and he says, today the uh, the typical American family needs, why is this doing this? Sorry, bear with me. The, the typical American family needs 11434 per year in additional income just to maintain the same standard of living they had when Joe Biden took office. So much for beating inflation. The categories making Americans struggle include food, transportation, housing, and energy, which together make up 80 cents on every additional dollar spent. So, you know, that is an awful lot of money to need um, within a, a three-year period of time, 11,000 additional dollars to need. And this is why we're in the crypto space, because we are, you know, me personally, I don't know why you're in the crypto space, but me, I like these assets that can't be printed. You know, we know how many Bitcoin there are. We know how many XRP there are. Yes, there are some cryptocurrencies 
who theoretically have an infinite supply, such as Ethereum. I made the mistake of saying Ethereum was fixed on one of my videos and I quickly got educated by people. Uh, so apologies for that. But yeah, you know, I try and educate my children whilst they're young that precious metals, gold, silver, etc. These things are a great store of value. Things like property, real estate. You know, when you're just watching governments just printing and printing and people needing an additional $11,400, I'm pretty sure most people working in America are not getting paid an additional $11,400. So, you know, we're in a crazy time at the, mo at the moment. The world is a little bit crazy. The world's on its head. The pendulum, there was a great quote from Neil Oliver. I think the guy's, yeah, it is Neil Oliver, uh, uh, a renowned kind of reporter in England who said, the pendulum has swung so far one way, it will swing back with the inevitability and it will swing back forcefully. And, you know, the world is up on its head at the moment. And this is the kind of difficult thing with trying to sort of ascertain what's going to happen in the crypto space, because we are in one of those periods of time where just the craziest things are happening on a geopolitical level. Everything's just crazy at the moment. And here we are trying to make sense of the madness. Normally, these markets are hard enough to try and work out what's happening. But with all the news and the narratives, it just kind of it blindsides people, which is why I think during these periods of time, it is very good to have a handful of chart people who are kind of looking at this information with a very cold and calculated eye. I hope that makes sense. Um, as always, this is not financial advice. And if you did like this video, please hit the like button because it really does help push this video out to other people. If you're looking for something to do, then feel free to visit my other channel, which is called The Discord Files, where I look at the most amazing stories this world has to offer. If you're on YouTube, then one of those videos will appear on your screen now. Thank you.